Welcome back to the world of Meteor World Actor. Here we continue Detective Ruka's wild adventures in the Seventh Republic, where even while he's slacking off on the job, there's no end to the criminals he faces, including his biggest target, the cult. But in this installment, Ruka has to face his greatest enemy, the women that hate him the most. Hi, my name is August, and let's take a look at Meteor World Actor, Badge and Dagger. Many thanks to Shiravune for providing a review copy for me to check out. Badge and Dagger is the continuation of the main story of Meteor World Actor. How Badge and Dagger fits chronologically is that while all the routes from the previous game happened, Ruka didn't get into a relationship with any of the girls. Besides, why would he get into a relationship anyway? His cold-blooded obsession with the group that committed mass murder comes first. Ruka's past with the cult has always been interesting. He's a hardy detective that does his job, with giant air quotes above that, but when it comes to the cult, he doesn't give a shit about laws and ethics. Hell, the very first scene is Ruka interrogating cult thugs before mercilessly executing them. His anger propels his actions forward, and he won't stop. He's even willing to negotiate with former enemies. All that matters is the cult is destroyed, no matter the cost. This is the most serious we've ever seen Ruka. He's even started to distance himself from his workmates. It's a suicide ambition and he'll go as far as he can until his power ends up killing him or the cult gets to him first or his previous bookings do or the women that actually hate him Batch and Dagger features two new heroines in the spotlight, the two women at odds with Ruka the most, Fuyumi and Ryoko. But while one genuinely thinks he's a shit stain in the police department that refuses to go away, the other one probably just dislikes him because he doesn't pay his tab from time to time. Fuyumi is about as straight-laced you can get, being about as stubborn and hard-ass about the rules as you can possibly think. Being the secondary for Ikuta, the top superintendent of the police force, she fully knows how much of a lousy trash bag Ruka is. And yet, there's one thing the two have in common, their hatred for the cult. To her, the enemy of my enemy is still my enemy, but I guess he can help out. When compared to Ruka, Fuyumi is nowhere near as capable, just a lot more reckless. That shared hatred brings the two together, and given their personalities, makes for some fun interactions. With Clara's third wheeling for good luck and money. <laughs> Well, a couple of life-threatening missions together and many drinking sessions later, and at some point, an angry bitch starts to look like a 10 out of 10 woman, sex included. Again, romance seems to be the <laughs> furthest thing from Ruka's mind, but the man won't deny an open opportunity to bet a hot woman. Believe me, the changing relationship dynamic of haters to lovers can happen, and I think it's very hot, but that's besides the point. But personally, in terms of the story progression, I don't think it's earned yet here. With these two, the romance happens way too quickly and ends just as fast. The romance aspect in Meteor World Actor was never the strongest point of the series. I never expected Fuyumi to be our potential romance love interest, and yet here we are. Well, at least with Ryoko, there's some semblance of familiarity. If you think about how many times Ruka skipped work to kick back at his local diner. Ruka and Ryoko have known each other for a long time, ever since Ruka started working as a detective. With Ryoko working as a waitress practically right next door, Ruka sees her almost every single day while he's on the clock. At this point, they're pretty much childhood friends. She may criticize him from time to time, but for her, it's in good fun, and it's easy to get a feel for his current attitude to do so. And most of all, for the, um, very little good points that Ruka actually has, she's willing to go up to bat to defend his extremely roundabout good nature. What's a shame, however, is that despite being a very good woman, her romance isn't an actual heroine route, but rather a tacked on aspect of the main story. Badge and Dagger places more of an emphasis on continuing its main narrative in favor of Ruka pursuing the cult. There are less one-off cases like in the previous game, and more interesting characters are added to the cast. It actually feels like a mystery thriller as we follow Ruka's ongoing investigation, while also diving more into Ruka's mental headspace. To those interested in the larger plot going on, this is exactly what you wanted. On the other hand, if you wanted to spend more time with the girls, you'll be disappointed here. However, the biggest issue that this volume suffers for, and it's not hard to guess considering the author, is that the story isn't done yet. Batch and Dagger ends on a cliffhanger for the battle and mystery continues for yet another installment. So once you finish this relatively short visual novel, the ultimate conclusion to Ruka's bloodthirsty revenge on the cult awaits. In other words, if you're like me and are 100% interested in Ruka's struggle, you'll pick up Badge and Dagger and the next one regardless in my opinion. Meteor World Actor, Badge and Dagger gets a 3 out of 5 from me. Feel free to follow me on Twitter for more thoughts about visual novels, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!